These are videos of both Donald Trump and Joe Biden celebrating Diwali in the White House during their respective tenures. Over the last couple of years, there has been a concerted attempt by both the mainstream left-wing and right-wing parties in the West to attract the vote of the Indian diaspora. But for all the love that the top-level leaders of these political parties show to the Indians and the Hindus, many of their followers sometimes do not feel the same way. Why has the Biden administration been so reluctant to criticize Modi's government on human rights. I am also deeply concerned about the situation in Kashmir. India's action is unacceptable. In a world with constant stimulation, I find it nice to relax and clear your thoughts as you do in yoga. Yes, it is. It almost certainly is demonic and you shouldn't do it. <laughs> So it's quite incredible that in a country that is as fractured socially as the United States, the Indian diaspora has somehow managed to unite the right wing and the left wing in its mutual hatred for the Indians and the Hindus in particular. So how did this anomaly happen? Well, let's find out in today's video. The Indian Americans are one of the most successful ethnic groups in the world and are the most successful ethnic group in the United States. What led so many Indian Americans to join the hospitality industry? The tag on the product may read made in the USA, but the sign on the CEO's door often says made in India. Why are so many CEOs of top American companies Indian? There is a trend that is fast being associated with the world's second most populous country world-beating CEOs. In case you haven't noticed, the CEOs of multiple Fortune 500 companies and some of the world's biggest tech companies are all Indians. The Indian diaspora is killing us, okay? <laughs> they are, Not they literally. Are. Not literally, but, and it, maybe in a good way, but killing us in terms of competition, okay? Mm -hmm. People are um, traveling from India to all different countries all throughout the world, and they are more successful than the general population. According to a Pew Research of 2015, among Indian Americans aged 25 or older, 70% had obtained a bachelor's degree and 40% had obtained a postgraduate degree. Whereas of all Americans, 19% had obtained a bachelor's degree and 11% had obtained a postgraduate degree. This is also a very good reflection of India, where it doesn't matter what you want to do in your life, whether you want to become a sports person or an entrepreneur or a government worker or work in the private sector, you still have to get a degree in engineering. Not only this, the median household income of Indian immigrants in 2019 was much higher than that of the overall foreign and native-born populations. And I think that's why these political parties love the Indians so much. And if doing so well in the economic sphere wasn't good enough, Indian Americans are also marking their territory in politics. Vice President of the United States Kamala Harris, despite being not so favorable to India, is of Indian origin, which interestingly explains why she has started to embrace her Indian roots all of a sudden. It shows the financial power that the Indian diaspora has, that after acting like a black Baptist for decades, she decided to to embrace her Indian roots just in time for the elections. Other prominent Indian politicians are Jennifer Rajkumar, Bobby Jindal, Nikki Haley and Aruna Miller. So why is this relevant? Well, it's relevant because this means that the Indian diaspora in the West already has financial power but is also now gaining political power. But that success comes with its fair share of detractors. Like I said, the interesting thing to note about the Indian diaspora overseas is that it is hated by both the far left and the far right. Let's first talk about the left's hostility towards Indians and particularly Hindus. As I said, the heads of these parties are trying to attract the Indian American vote. Indian of descent Americans are taking over the country. But their supporters think differently. Why has the Biden administration been so reluctant to criticize Modi's government on human rights. I'm not gonna sit here and say that everybody on the left hates Indian Americans because that's simply not true. But there is a large enough, vocal enough, and influential enough section within the left that does dislike Hindus, which makes it a serious problem for them. They compare Indian gods with pigs. There are certain left-wing Indian intellectuals that want all Indians to be kicked out of Western countries. So if the government were to take her advice, doesn't that mean that she would also get kicked out? Some Baniyas are accused of being Brahmins as if it's a crime. And if this wasn't enough, the Hindu preference of not eating meat is now being tied with casteism. Next thing, they will say that a neat peg is also racist because it separates water from alcohol. This is also funny because many Western left-wingers actively promote veganism, actively urge people to stop eating meat. But if Hindus do it, it's evil. Another interesting contradiction within the left is that on the one hand, when it comes to their own countries, they actively support the process of decolonization, which is removing the influence of their colonizers from their countries and their societies. Winston Churchill, in terms of his racism, 
and the way he used his privilege, power, and influence to cause untold misery and atrocities on non-white nations. But it wasn't until 1989 that South Dakota became the first state to switch Columbus Day to Native Americans Day, celebrating it for the first time in 1990. And so at least from that first one, we now have several decades of um, this day. He didn't discover America and he didn't prove the earth was round. He just bounced around the Caribbean, slaughtered a bunch of innocent people and died thinking he had made it to India. But when India wants to break free of its colonial shackles and decolonize itself by reclaiming the Ram Temple, by abrogating Article 370, by passing the Citizenship Amendment Act, by rebuilding the Kashi Vishwanath Temple, the Western left is completely against it. People don't know this, but despite Muslims being the minority in India, a significant minority, it's the second largest Muslim population in the entire world. So this affects so many people in addition to what Modi is doing in Kashmir, where they're still under lockdown and he's basically doing apartheid in slow motion in that region of the country. India, India used to be the moderate country uh, until Modi took over and he's a nationalist. Uh, when he was a regional leader, uh, he looked the other way as um, there was vigilante uh, violence against uh, minority Muslims in, in his region of India. And he didn't go to prosecute, and so uh, he's a, a, a Hindu extremist. If the symbolism of building a mandir over a mosque wasn't clear enough, Modi's visit to Ayodhya coincides with his crackdown on Muslim-majority Kashmir and serves as an affirmation that he sees India as a nation that serves Hindus first. In fact, any Indian Americans that support these things are called the worst kind of Americans. But if you are willing to act like racism isn't a thing, team up with lawyers and then take it to the courts when you don't get your way, you're right. You truly are an American. You just happen to be the worst kind. Well, I mean, at least when it comes to comedy. When you see Mindy Kaling's new show, Velma, and Hassan Minhaj's stand-up comedy, I guess Indians are the worst kind of people when it comes to comedy, at least. The West openly talks about the so-called impending genocide in Kashmir. The Prime Minister warned of an impending genocide in Kashmir. By the way, my friends, genocide has already happened. It happened all the way back in 1990 when none of you noticed it. In fact, parts of the left are so anti-India that they're now trying to use caste as a protected category in American colleges, which means that they're basically trying to say that caste is an intrinsic property of Hinduism and Hinduism cannot exist without caste. Basically, the American leftists are trying to define the Hindu religion for millions of Hindus living in their countries. Imagine them trying to do that for the Muslims and the Christians. Because if they did, then following this logic, they would also have to make Hindus, the pagans, a protected category within their countries. Because Christians and Muslims are actively taught to discriminate against pagans. So what's the reason behind the Western left's hatred for Indians? Well, see, the left hates India because for decades, India had craved the acceptance of the Western liberal elite. And Nehru craved this acceptance as well, which is why he famously made Kashmir a bilateral issue. He made the Panchshil pact with China despite its aggression on our borders. He didn't embrace Hindutva, which is a political and cultural ideology unique to India and based within the Indian civilization, just because he wanted to show himself as a statesman in front of the Western liberal elites. In fact, I would argue that even the BJP has this problem. Their leaders spend all day bashing the Washington Post and the New York Times, but would also happily strangle their grandmother to be interviewed by the Washington Post and the New York Times. Their supporters will often complain about colonialism, but will also do pujas of Trump just because Trump said one nice thing about them. But I would argue on my end that this has reduced since 2014. Indians since 2014 feel a lot more comfortable in their roots. Along with India's rising economic and military strength, rooted in its pride in its civilization, has given India the confidence to largely ignore whether or not they have the West's blessing. And because of this, the Western elites feel insulted. That a country that was shitting on the streets just a few years ago, now no longer wants their help, now no longer wants their input, and wants to have a sovereign and independent domestic policy based around their cultural norms and not the cultural norms of the West. Another reason is that by being ridiculously successful, the Indian Americans and particularly the Hindus shatter the stereotype that the Western elites have been trying to push for a very long time. That minorities are horribly oppressed in the West and that there is no hope for these minorities unless and until we shatter and dismantle every single institution in the Western countries. A third reason is that many of the biggest critics of India and the Indian diaspora is Indians themselves. Since Modi came to power, India has grown more hostile to minority groups. Among a vocal minority, there's been a resurgence in religious nationalism, specifically Hindu nationalism. The idea that India 
is a Hindu nation, which completely goes against secularism, which is enshrined in the Indian constitution. Likewise, I'm proud to have been speaking out for the rights of minorities in India since I first took office. As you might know, I introduced a bipartisan resolution calling on the Indian government to uphold basic human rights in Jammu and Kashmir. It asked the government to lift its communications blackout, end detention without charges, and respect religious freedom. I also spoke out against Prime Minister Modi's citizenship law that excludes Muslim migrants from a new pathway to citizenship, an unprecedented break from India's secular constitution. Now, if this is a representative of India, then we are definitely talking about a casteist India, which doesn't educate its student. And even in the political as well as media discourses, we don't talk about this. Many on the left are also firmly in bed with the Islamists and consider them to be victims of the West and of Indian nationalism. Now let's talk about why the right wing hates Indians. Well, there's the obvious hatred, which is motivated by their imagined religious and racial superiority. Many Western right wing accounts that are gleefully shared and retweeted by Indian right right-wingers themselves have not very nice things to say about Indians and Hindus. They believe yoga is a satanic practice. They compare practicing yoga to conjuring spirits. It almost certainly is demonic and you shouldn't do it. <laughs> How can we forget about Tucker Carlson? When the British pulled out of India, they left behind an entire civilization, a language, a legal system, schools, churches, and public buildings. See, their hatred comes from a place that not only are these Hindus Satan worshippers and devil worshippers, but Hindus are also a constant reminder to these people that these are the pagans that survived. Their culture was able to completely eliminate the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Celts and the Nordics. But Hindus, they're those pesky pagans that got away. Well, at least for the time being. And especially when it comes to the case of the Indian Americans, they're also economically a lot more successful than many Christians, which is a constant dagger in their ideas of religious and racial superiority as well. So this isn't very surprising, but what is really surprising is that one of the attacks that the right is making on the Indians is actually inspired by the woke left. Right-wingers are making left-wing woke arguments that Indian Americans are outperforming Christian right-wing Americans because of caste privilege. And it's not just limited to these kinds of comments. In fact, when learning about India, right-wingers like Ben Shapiro turned to leftist intellectuals like Ram Guha. Barry Weiss, a conservative opinion writer of New York Times, left New York Times because according to her it was too woke, but also then proceeds to use the New York Times to attack India and Modi. This is the weirdest crossover since Jai Bheem Jai Meem, where privileged upper caste Ashraf Muslims pretend to be victims just like scheduled caste Hindus. So in this scenario, what should India do? It's very simple. Pick and choose your battles and pick and choose your friends carefully from both sides. In a country when sections of both the left and the right hate you, you have to find friends in both camps. The United States particularly is a country where elections are being won on smaller and smaller margins. And so small populations like the Indians, who have significant populations in some very important states and also have significant amounts of cash to spend, can become kingmakers in many elections. In fact, they should learn some lessons from the Jewish community. No one in the American mainstream dares to attack the Jewish community, apart from the most extreme elements, because they have been able to create enough political and economic influence in the country to keep themselves largely safe. And that is a good path to emulate, I believe, for the Indian Americans. But often, like I said, it is Indian Americans who get in their own way by becoming too woke and attacking their own people. So I want to ask you, what is the solution for this very unique problem that the Indian Americans and the Indian diaspora in general is facing of being attacked by both the left and the right? Let me know in the comment section down below. As usual, if you like these explainer videos, let me know in the comment section what is the next explainer video that I should make. Other than that, if you want to check out our latest merch, click on the merch link down below in the description. If you want to become a member of the Muck Club, click on the Patreon link in the description down below. I will see you for the next episode and until then, stay happy, stay healthy and to all of you, a secular pranam. <laughs>